Hi, my name is Ray Cross from the University of Maryland. I'm here at Digestive Diseases Week in Washington, D.C. And I'd like to tell you about an upcoming presentation that's going to occur on Tuesday morning. Um, I'm going to present the re results of a randomized controlled trial of telemedicine for patients with IBD. The acronym for that is TELA-IBD. The objectives of the study were to assess telemedicine as an adjunct to routine care in patients with Crohn's disease and ulcerative colitis. We were comparing disease activity, um, quality of life, and healthcare utilization between the two telemedicine groups and the standard of care groups. The tele-IBD trial was a randomized controlled trial. To be eligible, patients had to be adults. Um, they had to have had a flare of disease within the last two years, and they had to be uh, willing and able to provide informed consents. There were a couple types of patients that were excluded from this style, trial. Patients with any type of surgical stoma, patients that had short bowel syndrome, patients in which the provider felt that surgery was imminent, those with uncontrolled medical or psychiatric disease, and pregnant patients were excluded from the study. Patients were randomized one to one to one to receive either telemedicine every other week, telemedicine weekly, or standard of care. The telemedicine intervention uh, was via text messaging technology. So patients in the telemedicine group received three core questions that were felt to be critically important to uh, monitor their disease. When they completed these three questions, they were then assigned a zone assessment. The green zone represented that patients had no disease or mild symptoms. The yellow zone represent, represented mild to moderate symptoms. And the red zone represented moderate to severe symptoms. Any patient assessing in the yellow or red zone generated an alert to a nurse at one of the three centers. Um, after they completed their assessment, they also received a specific action plan to carry out. They then answered additional questions about their bowel symptoms extraintestinal symptoms, adverse effects of therapy, and they measured their body weight using an electronic scale that was provided to them for the study. Patients who reported moderate to severe side effects also triggered an alert to the treating team. The treating team then would review the results and make specific additional recommendations if appropriate. I mentioned that the three centers, there were three centers for the study, University of Maryland, University of Pittsburgh, and Vanderbilt. This was a one-year study with assessments at baseline six months and 12 months. Uh, the, we tracked disease activity using the Harvey Bradshaw Index for Crohn's and the Simple Clinical Colitis Activity Index for ulcerative colitis. Disease-specific quality of life was assessed with the IBDQ, and healthcare utilization was assessed by looking at all healthcare events one year prior and one year after randomization. The results of the study uh, are as follows. We saw a decline in disease activity both in Crohn's and ulcerative colitis in all three groups over the course of the study. None of these differences from baseline, however, were significant between groups. We likewise saw an increase in disease-specific quality of life in all patients, but again, there was no difference, significant difference between the telemedicine groups and the standard care groups. When we looked at healthcare utilization, we found a number of interesting findings. First, in the, looking at the patients overall from pre to post randomization, there was a significant increase in all encounters, in office visits, infusions, and telephone calls. When you broke it down, however, by groups, and when we adjusted by 100 patient event, 100 patients per year, we found that telemed telemedicine patients had a significant decrease in IBD-related hospitalizations and non-IBD-related hospitalizations, but they had a concurrent increase in the number of office visits, telephone calls, and electronic encounters. So there are a few limitations of our study. Uh, one is that Providers and the treatment team were not blinded to the group assignment, so it's possible that either knowingly or unknowingly, providers could have provided extra care for the standard of care group to improve their disease activity and quality of life. In addition, when looking at healthcare utilization, we were only able to capture events that occurred within the medical systems of each center. So it's possible that healthcare utilization outside the medical system could have been missed. 
If that were the case, that would be a non-differential bias and bias results towards the null. Um, lastly, all three centers are referral centers for the treatment of IBD, so our results certainly are not generalizable to community practices that have less resources for the care of patients with IBD. So in summary, the, random, uh, the tele-IBD trial um, showed a decline in disease activity, improvement in quality of life in all patients enrolled in the study. However, the telemedicine intervention was not associated with improved disease activity or quality of life compared to controls. However, telemedicine patients did have a decline in hospitalizations, but an increase in office visits, telephone calls, and electronic encounters. Future directions for this study include using telemedicine as a replacement for some standard of care without decreasing quality of life. Thank you very much.